Welcome to lecture 11. This lecture is about how we can visualize the light intensity we receive from our sensor. As we have added two lights to our scene, the sunlight and the hemi-light, the problem seems trivial. At first thought, we might think that just adjusting the intensity of the lights will do the job. Nevertheless, we need to do more to come to something that's more realistic. Let me explain with an example. Here we see our strawberry in full light. In this lecture we will make the light intensity dynamic. This means that we can adjust the intensity with the keys minus and plus, and of course that the light intensity is controlled by the data we receive from our sensor. So this can be a result in which we see that the light intensity diminishes. And when the intensity is at zero we see that we have turned day into night. But there's a problem, because if we reverse what we just did and go back to our day, then we see that the background still looks like the night. In other words, there's a contradiction in how we perceive the strawberry fruit and the background. If we would change the background into, let's say, a clear blue sky, we can do exactly the same. So now everything looks like a bright day, our strawberry is in full light and the background is clear blue, and if we diminish the intensity of our lights, the strawberry vanishes into the night, but our background still indicates daytime. So we see that the background in 3GS is not affected by the light, so changing the intensity of the lights does not change the background. And that's what we need to make things more realistic. So to resolve the problem of a realistic daylight cycle, we need not only to address the problem of the light intensity, but also make the background dynamic when it comes to its color. So in this lecture we want to create a realistic daylight cycle that can represent the light intensity we receive as data from the sensor. This includes not only to make dynamic the intensity of our lights, but also create a gradient for our background. For this we will be using a method on the renderer, which is the set clear color method. With this method and its transparency property, we can create the gradient we need to come from bright daylight into a pitch dark night. And this enables us to include all stages of the daylight cycle. So together with the light coloring of our hemi and sunlight, we come to a more or less realistic representation of the light intensity. What does it mean for the structure of our script? We'll add some new variables to our variable list, and we will create a new object that stores the light intensity values of our lights. We have to make some adjustments to our init function, and to be able to debug with the minus and plus key, we also need to make adjustments in our key input handler function. Finally, we create a new function, brightness, that controls the intensity of our lights and the color of our background. In our light colors object, we add a new key for the color of our daylight background. In the init function, we have to make some adjustments to the renderer. First, where we instantiate the renderer, we add an object as argument. With the object, we set properties of the renderer. The property we want to set to true is the anti-alias property. Then we want to apply the setClearColor method to the renderer. It takes in two arguments, the first one is the color, and for this we take the color out of our light colors object. The second argument is the transparency. It is set to 1 so we see our clear blue sky. But when this value reaches 0, we will see through the FreeJS background and look at the background color that we have given the index.html file. And as you might remember, with some inline styling we have set the background there to black. So this is the manner in which we are going to create the gradient between blue and black. For the light intensity, we first create a new variable, which is called light intensity, and an object with the name intensity levels that stores the two light intensities for our lights. Then also in the init function, we set the light intensity to 100. This indicates that I have chosen to work in, let's say, percentages from 0 to 100 and not from 0 to 1, which can be a perfect valid alternative. As we have stored the intensity values in our new intensity levels object, we now have to refactor how we created our lights. So the intensity value is taken out and replaced with a reference to the key in this object. 
Then inside the key input handler function, we add this code block. The code block starts with an if statement that checks if the light intensity value is between 0 and 100, our range. The next two if statements check the key that's pressed, minus or plus, and will add or subtract a value of 5 to or from the light intensity value. So this is the way in which we make the light intensity value dynamic and control it with our minus and plus keys. Then we need to make sure that the light intensity value does not pass below 0 or above 100. So when it does, it's set back to 0 or 100. Finally, we call the brightness function with our updated light intensity value. In the brightness function, we set the intensity of our lights and the transparency of our background color. This is done in a range from 0 to 100, let's say in a percentage. So the intensities are taken from our intensity levels object and multiplied by the intensity level that our brightness function received divided by 100. This means that when the light intensity is 100, it will be divided by 100, which makes 1, and so the intensity will be that of bright daylight. But as the intensity drops, the intensity of the lights will be multiplied with a number that's smaller than 1 and will reach 0 when the intensity is 0. So for both lights, we create a range between their maximum intensity and zero intensity. For the transparency of the background, we can directly divide the intensity by 100, creating a range between 1 and 0. And then it's time to check the result. When we start our application, we see a bright sky with full lights. That's because we have set the light intensity in our init function to 100. If we adjust the light intensity with the minus and plus keys, we see that not only our strawberry gets darker and vanishes into the night, but also that our background gradually changes from blue to black. And of course it works also in the other way around.